So for years we in my lab have studied the mechanisms that dictate or control the switches that are turned on in the series of events that proceed from a fertilized egg to a very complex multicellular creature like ourselves. We've uh, been studying the molecular switches that tell cells to become to follow one particular route or another route because you start out with one specified cell type that is a fertilized egg and it needs to become hundreds of many different cell types. So the ultimate cells have each followed very complex and different trajectories uh, emerging out from that single cell. Each one of those traje trajectories is controlled by a switch. You can think of, in fact, like a train going down a railroad line and uh, if a train divided into multiple trains and kept doing uh, that until there were many, many different trains, there have to be decisions at many points along the way to switch tracks. And so we, for years, have studied those tracks, um, how that's, those switches occur. That's been a dominant theme in developmental biology for 100 years. So in the last five years or so, my lab has been studying uh, the processes that control uh, a cell's commitment to being a certain cell type. This was many years ago. We discovered that we could reprogram cells from one state to another. Cells that were going to become skin, we could turn them into uh, intestine. But we could do so only at a very, very early stage during embryonic development, only at a time when cells are quite naive. And so the experiments we did were designed to identify the genetic control systems that lock cells into their trajectories like that and to see if we can unlock them using genetics, that is, to break the locks. So what we found is there is a major control system, a signaling system, that is a signal, a system that's used between cells to communicate to one another. It's called the notch signaling system. It's been studied for many years in the context of development. But we found, what we found is it does something special. It not only tells cells what to become, it also tells cells to commit to becoming that. It locks them into their uh, developmental trajectories. The curious thing about our study, I think, as well, is that when cells get that notch signal, early on, they get it early on, they remember that many generations later. Cells divide and divide and divide, and the great grand descendants of a cell that has gotten that signaling information remembers that it got it and it remains locked because of the information it got from its ancestors. If we can prevent that lockdown, if we prevent that signal, then cells many generations can, they don't remember that they got that lock and they can switch many generations later. So that's the fundamental conclusions of our story. If we need part of our heart replaced, or if we need part of the kidney replaced, or a whole kidney, uh, we now have a control over the switches that allow us to switch cells that are growing in the lab over to, for example, becoming a heart or becoming a kidney. I'm not saying that we ourselves made heart or kidney cells, but we have uh, learned more about the fundamental switches that lock cells into not being heart or not being a kidney, and then we can break those locks and, create, and therefore direct cells into becoming heart or kidney.